flew over. We're trying a different server. It will be the same drafts, and um, well, going to be a little bit of a redo here. So, fingers crossed. Servers, please make the best out of this uh, kind of shitty situation. And we're just waiting for the players to ready themselves up. We should be able to get ourselves back in. And of course, we do apologize. Oh, kind of on behalf of Valve here, that uh, the servers did kind of go kaput. Not a lot that we can do. Um, and we have settled on just sticking with the same draft, just due to uh, time constrictions uh, and limitations. And the teams are fine with it. I mean, well, as fine as you can be out of a situation like this, which is obviously not ideal really for any kind of any of the players here. But uh, we're just I, trying I to make, make the best of it. I think it's okay. Like like yeah. you mentioned, if the teams are fine with remaking the same heroes, whatever. If they wanted to do a redraft, obviously it doesn't favor 4CL. Yeah. Because... If they were calling for a redraft, then we would consider it, yeah. And you got to kind of respect Alliance for not doing that. Because it's very easy to just say, okay, let's do a redraft. Take like the longest amount of time you can. It takes like 10, 15 minutes to finish the draft, and then they have to leave anyway. You know. Exactly, it's, yeah. You, you can't put yourself on in that position. Yeah, fair play. Fair play to both the teams for getting the show on the road nice and smoothly straight after. And uh, fingers crossed that the servers don't go kaput once more. We are on a different server, so all should be good. We have moved over to the lovely land of Stockholm rather than Luxembourg. So let's see how that one goes down. But Alliance versus Four Clovers, of course. And even though we're 40 minutes down the line, it is still the game one of this best of three here in uh, the European semi finals of our elimination mode tournament. I'm Odie Pixel. I'm here with Traskel. And the game is about to get underway, and we're seeing already kind of echoes of the last game. Bambo, he opts for a different place, but Ake, he's on top of it. He pings it out. Ake was able to get down this lane ward with a quick TP out. So he did see where Bambo was heading for that observer. So he'll be able to get rid of that one. No problems at all. That's kind of funny, to see how this uh, goes uh, down. the last time he placed a ward, he placed it at a different spot, and it didn't get dewarded, so... 30 seconds to battle. Oh, wait, he didn't deward this one either. He was actually just kind of chilling around in the area. So he doesn't either have money for sentries, or he's waiting for somebody he, he else to He pinged it him. out. I think he's aware. He's aware. Okay. It was pinged out by Lance, because uh, because of the lane ward that they popped down, they did see Bambo coming in, because they got that down before. It looks like Alliance, they're switching it up for this time around. They're going to look for the top rune, looking for that fight. And with the Tusk, it's going to be a fight indeed. So, oh, Four Clovers has got to be careful. Ice Shard's coming out. It's a trapped EGM, but EGM gets the Fisher. Loaded, just using the Blade Fury straight up here. And it seems like we're going to have a little bit less of a bloodbath than what we had in game one is no one's going to die here and everyone's going to return to their respective lanes safe and sound. I just hope that Alliance can feel the kind of early game they had previously because they were 5-0 up. Now, I don't think that mid was actually going as well as it could this game just because of the massive CS difference between we and S4 due to that bottom fight. So things are obviously a little bit different now. We're just going to have to see what happens. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how well Weha performs this second time around. Uh, as you said in the first game, it was quite something, but it was given a fair few free waves because of the action going down around the bottom route. And lane-wise, uh, teams are going to stick with the same as they were running last time. This whole kind of Tusk Juggernaut Rubik trial in here on the bottom, trying to deal with the Bambo Spirit Breaker. And uh, not quite sure what Bulldog finds so funny at the moment. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what they were talking about either, actually. He just laughed out of the blue, not sure what the deal is. Nice. Down the bulldog in here. He likes to have a bit of an ally giggle. Certainly does. In the, oh, in the raining jungle, in fact, Bambo just trying to disrupt the pull through. And Minus and Ake just fending him off, giving a lot of space for Loader to soak in the XP and get that CS down here behind his tower. And it's going to actually be a charge that's going to be cancelled here. And with the ice shards as well, there's nowhere for Bambo to go around that way. And, well, we saw the man die fairly early on in the uh, first attempt of this game. And it may be the same this time. Bambo trying to duke it around the tree line. But Minus, Bulldog, and Ake are there with a chase down. And Bambo just doing what he can here, creating space in for the trees. And it's actually going to be mid lane that Weeha finds the first blood. So Bambo paying it off there, allowing his team to get the first blood. So... Well, even though he dies, I, I think he did the job right there, Andy. I, I space. I don't. I guess <laughs> that's like that's the the standard response, right? When it takes like 45 seconds to a minute for the enemy team to actually kill you. But I mean, getting the first blood in middle lane that's also going to be massive. And unfortunately, that puts S4 potentially in a worse situation than he was in the first game, just by having given him that solo kill. Because mm -hmm. now there is going to be a big experience differential. Nice blink from Wee. Keeps himself yeah, alive. He's got the bottle up, gets that bounty run, he's going to be okay in terms of regen. And Bulldog, 
So he's actually left the top lane here and he's already gone back into the jungle. So already sacking this top lane. Which of course is going to give Swift ending a lot of space here on the Bloodseeker. And of course we do, we do see this happen when the DS feels that he could be potentially giving away his life if he's stuck around any longer on the top. Mid lane CS wise this time 10 for 5, 9 for 5, a little bit closer here between we and S4. But S4 trying to turn it around, there's going to be the snowball coming through. We are, will get the blink off, the stun will not connect. And now we are just trying to turn it around with the right clicks with the screen. Forcing Minots to retreat back over to his half of the map. Both himself and S4 incredibly low. He will have the south here. Oh, bottom lane, okay. He's found Bambo. Bambo trying to get himself close to the creep wave. Get that XP. A loader already halfway through level 4. And the CS difference between the two carries is a little bit of a, a lead here for Swift Ending. I mean, he has got this free lane, whereas loader having to worry about the uh, the Bambo Spirit Breaker down here on the bottom. Yeah, it's not just a free lane either. It's also just having that extra damage that you get from having two points and a thirst, like plus 41 right now. It's very hard to miss a CS when you have that kind of damage. And you can also see that Soxka, or Soxka is around helping him out, doing a little bit of pulls to give him that extra jungle creep on top of it. And in that mid lane, it's kind of the race to level 6 here in terms of getting a kill put at the moment. Slightly advantageous here for Wii as he touches onto level 5, but only just. And uh, I think S4 is going to be a little bit happy with how the mid lane is going this game as compared to in the first instance of it. EGM just on the side, still just sitting at level 1, but he really wants to try and find something with the Fisher. Oh, hang on, by the bottom rune, Ake, he's going to deny Bambo that double damage, and he's going to turn around and give him the slap, and quite some slap indeed with the DD. I think Bambo's going to go down here. One more right click from Ake, shouldn't do it, no. The stick charges are there. Ake's going to try and chase this down. S4 doesn't want to, realizes that Ake can finish that one off, and... The Rubik will find the kill. Top lane going in onto Minot. Swift ending, moving in close as well. There's going to be TP reaction coming in. Snowball to buy some time here for Minot. Ake's turned up. Still popping the clarity. Hasn't quite got enough mana here for a Fade Bolt or Telekinesis, but doesn't need it as Saxa and Swift ending are forced back by the TP reaction. And we'll just uh, settle here at 2-1 here between the teams. Still favoring the side of Alliance. Mid lane, a bit of pressure being applied. We has hit screen. Oh, he's got the level six. He's got the Sonic Wave. He's going to pop it. Gets the kill on test four. Ake there with the Telekinesis. Still has a little bit of a remainder of that double damage, and it might just be enough here to find the kill. One more right click flying through. No, the ball charge is enough. He's out of ball charges, though. He'll have a blink in a couple of seconds. Should be able to get out. Bulldog moving in. He's got the blink. He can't oh. quite get it out. Ake there with the final touch to bring down Weeha. And uh, some nice bit of global play there from Ake. We saw him all the way by the Dire Ancients, then up to the top lane, and then to the mid lane. Pretty much everywhere that he needed to be there in that last few minutes of play. Yeah, Ake's early movement has been phenomenal. Even during the first game, before we had the rehost, he was pretty much doing the same thing. Just Radiant's realizing that S4 was top. going to be a high priority target for 4CL. They really want to make sure this Lena does not have a good early game because it's a really good counter to heroes like Bloodseeker just because of your sheer burst damage. You get stunned once, you get into a Light Strike array, and then you're just dead. So. I really like the fact that 4CL are pressuring him so much, but Ake and Bulldog together managed to take out the Queen. And a bit of a change of a player from Bambo. He's now left the bottom lane, hanging around the mid lane, looking to charge in on someone. As, as you said, S4, not quite reaching that level 6 yet. Wee's going to head up for the 6 minute rune. He's going to hope for something nice, maybe an Invis or a Haste or even a DD, just so he can look to continue to, to play as aggressive as he is. And it will be the Haste rune here for Wee, huh? Oh, Ake has indeed found Bambo. Just going to lift him away here to give him the, the heads up that he knows that the Spirit Break is about. Swift ending. Just trying to get some pressure in on this top tower. We've got both Bambo and Saxa hanging in the river here to the low ground. Maybe seeing if Swift ending can lead him with a rupture as he's now hit level 6. Ping's on the mid lane. How's Bulldog's Dark Seer going? He's managed to find level 5 here. He's got the Sol Ring coming up to 1k gold, so he's picking up the pace here in the jungle. And it will be EGM and Bambo moving towards the mid. Ake did scout that out. The Ping's coming out. So S4 should be okay here. He's got the backup and Minots as well. So it might be hard for the side of four Clovers to find a pick off on this Lena here if they hang around. Yeah, the Queen doesn't have ulti either. We're on 15 seconds though. Maybe they can do it, but I think they probably lose a hero in the process. The, the big thing for me is still continues just to be Ake. Like he's halfway to level six at seven minutes in. Oh, look at that bottom lane as well worth noting. Loader did go in with the Omni Slash and Bambo. Living just by the skin of his teeth. We'll make it back to base, but that's going to be the Omni Slash down. And now we see EGM eyeing up Loader. Sax is there as well. Loader hasn't got any mana here, so no play fuse. He's got two stick jet one charges. It's not going to be enough. And well, with Weeha TPing in as well, 
Loaded just a, a little bit too far for his own health, then that's going to be an easy pick off there for the side of Four Clovers. The nice thing about having Queen on your team is you have that sonic wave, so even if spin comes out, yeah. you just have that extra 290 pure damage that's going to cut right through it. And because of the fact that he only has one bracer for health and I guess a couple of wand charges, you still get bursted pretty heavily against this lineup of Four Seal. On top lane, there's going to be a charge onto Minot. Bloodseeker's there, Swift Ending may be ready to dive deep if he wants to. He has that rupture. And now they're going to cancel the charge. And Bambo's going to maybe look elsewhere. TP will be coming in onto the mid lane from EGM. Sets up with a Fisher. They've got anything to follow through. Bambo's moving in from the top lane. Ake's there to block him off, and well, Bambo will manage to grab himself the rune. Light strikes there. There's going to be a snowball as well. Bambo in a hell of a lot of trouble. And Alliance will find the kill there onto the Spirit Breaker. Getting caught out there by the three heroes of Alliance. Yeah, I think Bambo is having about the same game that he did before. Not really too <laughs> much is going in his favor right now. And I think a lot of that is just attributed to the fact that the support movement of Alliance has been great. Like, every single time he would want to go on something, there's always going to be a Rubik there, there's always going to be a Tusk there. And they're both great as defensive supports and being able to stop a hero like Spearbreaker from getting in. And I think that's a big reason why they wanted that Rubik, because first you have a lot of things to steal, right? Like, you can steal Queen abilities, all of them are great. You can steal um, Charge, for example, Fissure. You can steal Curse, even, from Winter Wyvern. There's tons of great stuff for you in that regard. And then you also have this immediate disable, where if a queen ever blinks aggressively on mid, you can guarantee your light striker rays every single time. And we've already seen that Ake and S4 are great at synergizing the two skills. Yeah, they've done some nice plays so far in the mid lane. Top lane, Bulldog and Minots hiding in the trees. Bulldog's actually going to surge himself away from this, and it's just going to be a question if they find Minots. He's going to TP straight out, and they're not going to look deep enough to find him, as he will manage to escape there. Arcane's now picked up here by EGM. As we'll see him try and be a little bit more active across the map bottom lane. Loader has got that Omni Slash available once more. This is not going to be quite the, the best tool to bring down Bambo, at least on his own. He's going to need to have a plus one down here if he wants to try and bring down this space cap. It's a little bit too tanky there with the 950 HP, 6 armor. S4 just applying some pressure on the mid. He's going to get the fortification out. TP coming in from Weeha. Both heroes with those ults available. And Weeha has got the backup here. Oh, Sax are just waiting in the wings. But at the same time, over on the side of Alliance, and Bulldog and Minuts are also there, ready to offer S4 a helping hand if needs be. Yeah, pretty... Like, both teams want to make something happen, you can tell, just by the way that they're positioned, right? But it's very hard to engage at this point in the game, especially knowing that somebody like Loda, he has Omni Slash available, he has level 4 spin, he's even got Healing Warden. The uh, Dire Observer in the bottom is going to spot out Ake kind of chilling down here. So they have an idea of what they're getting themselves into, and it still seems like they want to try to rotate over. So we'll see if they want to try to go for this. And they just uh, walked with a quick charge onto Loader there, giving him a bash back. And support is turning up Minots, now joining forces with Ake. Hasn't quite got the level 6 with the Aura's Punch yet on Tusk. He's very close to doing so. Oh, mid lane, Weeha and the S4 matchup. Weeha with the slight edge in terms of denies, but it's uh, not too far behind for S4. He's still going to be fairly happy with the performance so far. And uh, I mean, as you said, they, they were already sent down two supports here to the bottom, but now a swift ending coming down as well. You really want to make something happen. Smoke up. They're going to wait for Bambo to almost certainly lead him with the charge here. So it's going to be the rupture, followed up by the Fisher. Loader will look for the spin, and he's going to look for the TP. They're going to need to try and find the damage through it all, and they will. They'll get the kill onto Loader. Now they're going to look for more. Weeha moving forward. He's found Minus with the Screamer now with the charge as well across the tree line. Looking for the Tusk. Can he get the Snowball out in time? No, he can't. Double kill for the rotating Bloodseeker. And uh, what well, we've been talking about, the great kind of map awareness and rotations from the supports of Alliance. Got a whole line up there, four Clovers coming out on top, and maybe in the mid lane now with the split to blast onto S4. Charges coming through as well from the bottom. Can S4 get himself out of this? He's out of one charges, out of bottle charges as well. We may just see Bambo go balls deep here. I don't think there's any reason for him to stop as he charges across the map. He's also got it. Oh no, he's going to cancel it. Dodges out the light strike array. Very smartly done. And now it's going to be Weeha. Blinking forward with the sonic wave. Finds the kill. Minot snowballing forward. Trying to find some kind of turnaround here for the side. But Weeha is going to pop the charges. He's going to have blink in three seconds. He's just going to turn around and punch it. Wall's been dropped as well. He's got the blink now. But no, he's going to stay there. He's going to go down. Bambo moving in. He needs a bash. But it's going to be the punches coming out instead. They will find the kill onto touch. Now Bambo trying to get out with the Omni Slash. It's massive. It finds one. EGM pops the echo. He's not going to do anything through the Blade Fury. And Loader will find himself a 
double kill in the mid lane, and uh, <laughs> it's a good job that Juggernaut turned up because that pretty much just made that little bit of a trade even for the side of Alliance. Yeah, all in all, I, I think it's a little bit okay here. Middle lane. Oh, well, well. That's an interesting one. Well, they've got the rupture and the uh, blood right to follow up. They're moving in, but the blade fury's there. Ake now with the lift onto Swift, standing there trying to find the Bloodseeker. He's a little bit too damn fast, and they just can't chase him down. Will manage to find himself out of there, but Loader will survive, and I think that's what the Lions are going to be happy with. Now they look to apply some pressure in to the mid lane tower. They do have level three healing ward here on Loader, and here we go. Oh, there she going to catch EGM there with the light strike array. So they will force back the pressure and the aggression from Alliance, but seven for seven on the board here, Draskal. Yeah, I think uh, a little bit of action, you know, in the last couple of minutes. <laughs> Tower diving, tier twos at, what, 12 minutes into the game. That's a, that's a bad boat team for sure. But it is very dangerous taking these long engagements in the early game because the heroes just respawn so fast that if you're diving, you're Radiant probably going to fight more heroes attack. than you have because it's going to take way too long for the rest of you to run across the map as opposed to the enemy who can just TP in. So... A little bit weird that they decided to dive that hard. They did get a couple of value kills. I think the most important thing to note, though, is just the fact that right now, I think, like, 4CL have done a, an okay amount, but I really don't think they've done enough yet to really get to that snowball stage. I think it really depends on the next engagement or two. Obviously, Swift Ending is having a great game. But... Yeah, his farm's fantastic. 7.5k on him at the moment in terms of net worth. Yeah, I mean, he's got, what, 122 CS in a 14-minute game? Like, he is a monster. He needs to die. Like, somebody needs to kill that guy. Yeah, I mean, in terms of dealing with the uh, Bloodseeker, I mean, they've got the Lena. You know, they've got that massive amount of nuke damage. If they can catch him out of position, they can certainly give it a good shot. And Lena, of course, well, he's got the Staff of Wizardry. Tree. Going to be going for that Yule Scepter, which is going to be something else that's uh, pretty much an essential pickup against this Bloodseeker in order to try and catch him out. Bottom lane, Loader moving forward, he's hit level 11, has got the Omni Slash back and available. Mambo's just keeping it quiet in the tree line here. Maybe they'll look towards Bulldog here on the top lane. I mean, so far, Bulldog's been having a fairly good game. Hasn't died at all so far, and he's well on his way to picking up that mech. They're really good at utilizing Darkseer, and I think they showed that yesterday. Oh, Loader. Wow. Omni Slash is an illusion, Bambo, <laughs> with the mind games. Unfortunate. <laughs> Bambo, he's a smart man. We've got to check, check that out in the old replay. That's a, unfortunately at Loader's expense, but that was that was a little bit unfortunate there. I mean, as somebody who plays Juggernaut a fair amount, I can understand that. You see yeah. something isolated and you're like, I just want to go. And the thing is, they didn't have vision of either rune, so they actually had no way of knowing that it was an illusion unless someone was physically there to see and pick it up. So that, to me, is more like one of those things where it just happens, you know? And I hope that lag is not just me, because... <laughs> I'm getting that as I well. I think it's everyone. Super oh, that's server-wide. Think... Uh-oh. I think we're fine. We're fine. Well, it's paused. You don't actually know if we're fine. Yeah, it's, I'm just trying to be positive here, Jurassic. We're getting the G's. Let's give it the G. It's gonna be, everything's gonna be absolutely buttery smooth. Look at that. We're fine. We're back in. We're back in. We're good to go. We're all good indeed. But uh, well, I mean, so far, it's as you said. Maybe four clovers haven't quite found the the momentum that they were looking for. But nonetheless, I, I still kind of favor the position they're in at the moment. Yeah, I think for the time being, they probably have a slight advantage. I just think with their lineup, you kind of want to be more ahead because if you look at the darks here now, he's got mech available. You know, he's got Loader. the wall. They've got the Winter's Curse to set this up if they want to. Sax has found him. He won't really pop it. A little bit hesitant there. I guess he has only got the support of Bambo. EGM actually rotated towards the mid lane where Weeha will find that deny. Weeha just a few hundred gold away from picking up that recipe for the Orchid. A lot of eyes on Loader at the moment. EGM coming down with Weeha in tow. He's going to find himself that 16 minute rune. Will just be the bouncy. And actually sending a Swift ending down here as well. So everything. Coming down onto Loader here. He's got to be smart about this one. The charge is coming through. He has got a Blade Fury, but the Fisher coming straight through with the Bash as well, bringing him back into Echo Slam as well. EGM with the hate there. Winter's Curse onto Loader as well, and they'll bring him down. Nothing that the Jug can do to get out of that one. And, well, they, they really wanted that Juggernaut dead there. Well, that is a uh, got your man moment, I guess. They five manned him. They are going to get a tier one out of this. However, Alliance, they're trying to do what they can. Just going to pressure mid and top simultaneously. I'm not sure if they actually get either of these towers. I don't think they do. So losing your carry, losing the tier one, obviously good play here coming in from 4CL. And Alliance are going to be forced back before they can really do any sort of damage. 
And with that charge, is he actually going to go through? I was going to say, can this? they do anything with this? He's not got the ultimate. And he's okay ah. there as well. Ping's coming out. And we did just have a quick skip of lag there. Hopefully that's... Yeah, it'll pass. It'll pass. Attack. We're fine. We're fine. But yeah, 8 for 7. And as you said, tier 1 trades going on. Still Swift ending, sitting well and truly at the top of that net worth board. 9,600 gold in his bank. And there. Uh, okay, some items being finished up now for the mid laners. We are with his Orchid. But at the same time, S4 does get his Yules. And straight off the back of that, it's going to be Alliance here looking to smoke up into the jungle of Four Clovers. Let's see what they can find here. There's an Earthshaker and a Wyvern about. It's not going to be the biggest of kills, but it's going to be something in Ake, in fact, with a stolen charge. Looking to go full bamboo here on TGM with the lift up and everything. Light strike, <laughs> snowball, Warus punch to finish it off. The question is, can Full Clovers try and fight off the back of this? It looks like they might want to. Swift Danny's going to move up into the jungle, but the Yules is there. Bambo charging straight across the battle. Huge Sonic wave. They catch his three. Light strike comes out. The Blood Rush being laid down. They've got the wall, though. they found two, but it's actually going to be Full Clovers. They've found one kill in return. Looking for the bashes onto Loader. There's the bash. They'll find one, and they should be able to bring him down. That's going to be the jug down as well. Three heroes down. Chasing down Ake. We are with a final right click. Double kill. Bulldog looks to TP out. He'll be the only one to escape for Alliance. And Four Clovers. Turning that around with some some fashion there after it was Alliance, in fact, initiating that bit of play. That charge from Bamboo totally won him the fight. S4 threw out a Yules on the Swift ending, and even though the Bloodseeker still ended up dying, it was a much sloppier combo than it needed to be. So instead of just getting the Life Striker race straight after the Yules, his charge hits on three. And then the Sonic Wave, I think, hit pretty much everyone. Maybe it missed I think one, it was a three-man it... Sonic Wave at least. It was it was pretty huge. Yeah. yeah. It was a very, very nice play. And the healing ward immediately gets killed by Bambo. Like, almost the second Ooh. it's dropped, he's just standing right there. S4, he's level 11. Five seconds to the Laguna. He's going to want to go for this. If he can time it, TP is coming through as well. EGM's got to try and set this up with a Fisher, but he won't get out in time. The Light Strike Array comes through, and they'll find the Laguna onto we We'll find the pickoff onto Queen of Pain. And yeah, EGM, unfortunately, just a little bit slow with the Fisher. Could have maybe tried to cancel out the Light Strike cast, but uh, nonetheless, S4 coming out on top of that one. And they're going to go for a smoke up straight away again here. Last time for Alliance, it didn't really work out when they went aggressive. And they're going to look for something else here. Is they're going to head straight for the Roche Pit. 30 seconds with Weehar off the map. And they know even with a buyback, he's not going to have that Sonic Wave available. So this could be some nice play here. They've got to be aware, though, the Blood Bright, the Winter's Curse, the Echo Slam. No Blink Dagger, of course, yet up on EGM. Oh, they half so Half health now, Roshan. I mean, this is going to be a hard fight for them to take. Can Bambo find a big charge again? No, it's going to be yours. The snowball straight out from the pit. Looking for Swift ending, but now Minus, he's trying to turn this one around. He's got to get himself out of there. Blood Rage's been laid down. Bambo will be lifted up here. Now with the mech pop, they're turning it around. They're going to look for Bambo, and they will find it. They did lose Minus here on the high ground, though, as this is simply a one-for-one -one trade so far. Fisher coming out, but that's kind of actually going to just block off full close. Oh, no, okay, they can still get through the gap. Swift ending moving forward. We are turning up for the high ground, pots the silence, but Laguna Blaze straight out to Wee. Will be able to blink himself out. Oh, Bulldog looking for a vacuum onto nothing there. Not quite finding anything, but the light strike. No, he's not going to catch Swift ending. Sax is going to be fine. They have lost EGM there as Loda found the kill onto the Earth Shaker there, I believe, with the Omni Slasher. It was indeed. And still no one to take Roshan, and the chase continues. Jules now to Saxa, light strike, and the Blade Fury. Sax in a lot of trouble. Cold Embrace wouldn't even save him there. Too much magic damage for him to deal with. And Alliance. Doing pretty well here. Coming out on top of the fight, on top of the trade. And Loader, he really wants to try and get himself back in the Roche Pit. But they know that we are about. They know he's got that Sonic Wave. Swift ending. Of course, still a major issue here for the team. And yeah, they're, they're just not even going to try and go back in the pit. It's just uh, too damn risky for them for the time being. Yeah, I, I don't blame them at all for backing there. The interesting thing about that fight was uh, Minots actually ended up getting him, himself solo echoed, which in reality is very useful in those situations, especially when you're fighting around this enclosed space like Roche. So even though he dies, I think that eating the echo is probably for the greater good because the rest of the lines were just able to walk away. After he throws out the Fissure and the echo is down, Fissure has a, a pretty lengthy cooldown. 15 seconds in a team fight is a very, very long time. So unfortunately for EGM, he wasn't really able to have any huge impact. And the stolen rupture from Ake just pretty much forced Bambo to go in. Like he got ruptured, and then he couldn't do anything but try to make something happen. And unfortunately for uh, for CL, it didn't work out. Do you know I me mean? for the next fight though? Swift ending, closing in on that BKB. 600 gold towards the recipe. And uh, it's going to be four clovers now heading their attention towards the pit. He's going to just throw out the blood right just in case anyone's in there. But uh, it's, they're wiser than that. They're looking for uh, the farm elsewhere across the map. And they're starting to pick up the pace. They're still a little bit behind though, the net worths of that uh, of four clovers. Bottom tower. And they probably want to look to try and contest this. The pings are coming out. So I think they are aware. 
Minus is moving towards the pit with the sigil. And I forget again, four clovers. They don't really want to be fully committing to this, and they do back themselves out. A little bit too scared, potentially, of kind of the Dark Sea Alina combo. The whole vacuum wall, light strike array. It's going to be a hard one for them to take, and Bambo, well, he's hiding up here on the high ground. Illusion's just going to come through here at the moment. Yeah, well, that'll be hit up straight away by the roast, and they'll know that it's not really S4. There's an Invis Rune array. Okay, jumping straight onto Bulldog. If they can get Bulldog out of this fight before it even begins, this is pretty big. Now, there's no wall, no vacuum for them to worry about, and 4-Clover now in a much better position to re-enter the pit. Question is, can all lights do anything to stop them without the Dark Seer? Okay, hanging around on the high ground. He wants to try and start something, but it's going to be hard without that Dark Seer. Loader's there as well, and oh, he's got the Invis Rune. And okay, Light Strike to set this one up, but S4 gets shut down by the Winter's Curse. Isn't going to be able to get out his combo. Loader moving in from the backside with the Blade Fury, but the Roche will go down. Weehar picks up the Aegis. Now he blinks forward. Sonic Wave onto Ake and S4. None of them to die as of yet. We'll get themselves up to the high ground. Ball being popped, but now with the Light Strike, the Laguna, they turn it around. They bring down Weehar once. Snowball from Minus moving on to the Sexy Bound, but they will find the kill onto the Breaker. Weehar, of course, with the Aegis, will come back for round two. And well, round two doesn't go well for Tusk. Minus to fall here as well as. Both Loader and Minot's falling. They only find the kill onto Bambo. They did take the Aegis out of Weehar's hands, but again, another fight going the way of Four Clovers. It was a really weird engagement. Like, first you see a curse. There's, like, no follow-up damage. It's pretty much just Rubik hitting S4. And then the fight really starts to kick off. Loda not even able to get off his Omni Slash. He got bashed into a charge, thrown into a Blood Ray, and then was just silenced until he was dead. And just to make sure that he was going to die, Swift Ending even ruptured him when he was at, like, 10% HP, so... Without that Omni going off, there was pretty much no way in a 4v5 situation, because obviously Bulldog got picked off before the fight really kicked off. Um, they, they, that was a really hard fight to win. I would actually say that Alliance, even though they obviously lost out there, getting the Aegis off we is enough to say, okay, we, we did all right. Radiance top tower. In the moment, down. top lane, Bulldog just pushing it out. Four Clovers sticking very much together here at this point. And we are actually going to be going for, uh, for kind of an early-ish big KB after his Orchid. He's looking to build kind of defensively, and I mean, it might certainly makes sense against the heroes that Alliance have got. Not wanting to be caught out in these fights and ensure that he can blink himself all around without getting taken down and stunlocked by the side of Alliance. The biggest problem right now for Alliance, and as you mentioned BKB, I just kind of want to emphasize the importance of those pickups for 4CL. Because mm -hmm. currently, S4 doesn't have Aghanims. And really the only form of physical damage they got outside of Juggernaut is like a Tusk Punch, you know? I mean, sure, Lena does a fair amount of right-click damage, I suppose, when she starts getting all her spells going, but S4 has been focused in a lot of these team fights. sometimes even prioritize over Loda. So if that happens, all of your heroes who are supposed to be dealing physical damage are pretty much disabled or, like, ruptured, for instance, like Loda would be. I feel like once those BKBs are out, Alliance are going to have a really rough 5 to 10 minutes waiting for S4 to bridge that gap between getting the Aghanims up so we can actually contribute during that phase. Let's see what they can achieve here, Alliance. Smoking up, making a move over to the Dire Jungle. Loader coming in from the top. Yeah, he's got the Omni Slash here. And looking to build into that Battle Fury, in fact, as well here on the Jug. Uh, they're moving in, but Swift Danny's going to be the one to dispel it. They've got the Yule straight in, and if they can lock this guy down. But no, the BKB comes out just in time, and that's going to be enough to save him. Gets down the blood right now with the charge free from Bamba going straight across the fight, across them all. They'll find one. There's an Omni Slash on Swift Danny, but the cold embrace is there. Luna can't do anything to bring down this hero. Now he's got to run. Weehar with the Sonic Wave finishing off Bulldog. It's going to be S4 taken down as he's trapped up on the high ground, and it's only Loader who might not even get away as Weehar moves forward. We'll find the dagger onto him, but the Blade Fury is there to remove it. The charge through from Bambo. And I've got to be honest, Bambo, he may have died a few times in the early game, but he's really stepped up his performance in every fight. I've got to be honest, Andy, it's because of these massive charges just straight across the battlefield, hitting everyone on the side of Alliance. He really knows how to take the hero to its limit, more or less. Like, all of his charges, like you said, phenomenal. Especially the one inside of their own woods that we saw probably like 10 minutes ago, where he single-handedly won in the fight with just a charge. It's not often that you see stuff like that happen, but Bambo has been able to keep himself in top shape after the not-so-great laning phase that he had here. And now Alliance, definitely on the back foot, puts S4 even farther away from picking up that Aghanim Scepter. And with that team fight, there is a new BKB acquired on the Queen of Pain that's 10 seconds long. These next couple of team fights, I think Alliance are going to be hard-pressed to win straight up 5v5 unless they get the surprise factor. And the irony is, that's what they were going for. 
Like, they mm. wanted to try to jump there. Unfortunately, they find the only person on the team with a BKB at that time. And then, of course, like you mentioned, the Cold Embrace into the Omni. And that, at that point, the fight's already over. Like, you initiate on a hero that you can't kill, and then you use a big team fight ulti on someone who's invulnerable to it. Like, that fight is just lost. And this, uh, this Bloodseeker is getting pretty damn scary. Now, level 17, 15,000 net worth on him, with the BKB and the Bash now complete on top of the SMY. He's, he's going to be quite hard, to say the least, for Alliance to deal with. I mean, we've already seen it in these fights. It's uh, our Alliance are going to need something big here. I mean, you know, Loader is catching up on his farm. He is the highest at the moment for Alliance, but still a fair few thousand behind Weehar and Swift Ending. And uh, how close is he to that Battle Fury? He was looking to finish that off. He's got one of the swords. He's got the purse of it. Okay, he's just, just missing that final 500 gold here and... Uh, I mean, the Battle Fury is an interesting one for the Jug to opt for this game. What do you think the, uh, the thought process is here? I feel like Juggernaut as a hard carry in this game can actually do okay. And maybe Loda is thinking to himself that going for Battle Fury will allow them another avenue of play. Because say, for instance, he wanted to go for the standard SNY Scotty build, right? The problem with that build right now, I feel, is that you kind of want to be at least equivalent farm of the opponent carries for that build to really be that good. And you're also relying pretty heavily on your ulti to deal the majority of your damage. And during these teamfights, he's also just being bashed to death by the Spirit Breaker or Echoed or Ruptured or whatever. So I feel like if he just wants to farm, go for a super hard carry build instead, go like Manta, Butterfly, Satanic, then he might be able to stay toe-to-toe -to -toe in the late game against Smoke these Smoke up here from the side of Four Clovers. Who are they going to find? It's going to be Ake. He's going to tank the gank. Maybe not too bad as S4 was kind of... Close by as well, so they do avert the attention away from the leaner. And S4 now has got that Akonimus complete. Bambo charging onto Loader here. Uh, is Loader going to be able to do anything to get himself out? Well, he's going to put the Omni Slash, but Swift Ending's there with the backup of We Are. Looking to play oh, Fear out, but the Bash God. is there from Swift Ending. They've got the Snowball though. They might be able to do something in response here. Wall's being dropped as well. They'll find the stuff of the Echo Slam from EGM and the Sonic Wave as well. They found two. They're going to be able to find Bulldog here as well. He's going to be a double kill for We Are on the Quap. Only S4 surviving, and that was because he wasn't having any of that fight. But again, for Clover, they're just finding the positive aggression every time that they look for it now. Yeah, that was not not the greatest. I think right now Alliance just need to try to find what farm they can. Obviously, that's easier said than done when you're playing against heroes like Spirit Breaker. You got Orchid Queen, you got Bloodseeker. I really feel like Force the L are just going to be non-stop applying pressure at this point. Because as good of an early game as Alliance had in Game 1, and even Game 2 it wasn't so bad. The first couple of real engagements they had were not good. And I think we kind of also went over during the draft that 4CL do have a snowball lineup. So if they get ahead, it is very difficult to regain the map control back from them. Yeah, they've got their work cut out here at Alliance, but well, they're certainly going to give it their all here. Remember, I mean, was it in the uh, first series when we saw Alliance, they lost the first game to Monkey Freedom Fighters, didn't they? Yeah, they went 2-1, uh, and one, I believe. Right? It was, wasn't it? I kind of felt that Alliance, they did really well kind of when the, the pool was limited. And this mode, I kind of feel it is sort of Alliance's mode. They do pretty well with kind of the, the unconventional picks. I mean, even in some of the normal games, they some, you know, they're known to draft stuff that people might say is not really part of this meta. So... I mean, even if game one doesn't go too great for them, they've certainly got a chance in game two and game three if it goes that far. But still, at the moment, I mean, what's the overall difference here between the teams? It's pretty massive. It's coming up to about 15,000 net worth difference for Alliance, and it's over 15k in terms of XP, so quite a lead here for the side of four Clovers. They're going to be very, very happy with their position so far, and we are with that Agonims complete now on top of the BKB. Yeah, he's a monster right now. I don't even know if they can kill him. That's the real problem. Because like we talked about, the damage split on Alliance is pretty lopsided towards magic damage, EGM. Looking oh, he's found Miner. It's very nice indeed. Four staffing forward. And now with the Orchid, Weeha going to work on him. There'll be a charge as well from Bambo. Just actually crossing past. He's got his eyes on something else. He's looking for Bulldog. Will find the greater bash here. And they'll look to bash him backwards. Ekro, the enchant totem is going to be enough there with a scream from Weeha. And that'll be a second pick off here for Four Clovers. And now they'll look to just try and push in this top lane and find themselves the final tier two here from the side of Alliance. I think everything's kind of just falling apart at the moment for Alliance. They're not really able to get anything together 
that's going to be strong enough to fight against the five mana four CL. And I think that they realize that. Like, if you notice the last probably yeah. 10 minutes or so, they really haven't separated too much. The biggest time where I, I would say they were apart was when Bambo was charging bottom, and his team was still behind him. They just don't run as fast as a charge. So, with that in mind, they have a, a clear directive here. They just want to try to end the game as soon as possible. Charge, coming out in the bottom lane, looking for Loader, he's going to look for the straight TP out, and they haven't quite got anything there to be able to deal with that. And now uh, has 4 actually finding Bambo, and he's got Ake here as well, so they can, oh, they don't want to go for it though. Wow, they, they don't are feel that so they can scared. do it. He's a little bit too tanky for their liking, even with the Agonim's Laguna Blade. They just feel they can't do it, and now with Swift Ending moving forward, they've found Ake here with a charge, turns around with a Fae Bolt, Weeha's there to join the party, and it's a godlike street now for his queen. I mean, we are's performance, 16 kills, 6 assists, only died the 3 times. He's, uh, he's quite a queen player. I mean, he got a solo kill on his 4 middle lane, so... That just goes to show that winning the lane the first game wasn't, uh, wasn't a fluke. You could easily say that coming to a lane a level down should make you win, but he, he definitely won the lane this game. And there we go. We were talking about the Bloodseeker earlier, but now with the Aegis... And the completed Abyssal Blade. I really don't know, man. Our Alliance are going to need something spectacular to turn this one around. And I mean, in kind of the in favor of Great Dota, I kind of hope to see it come out from them. But I don't know how they're going to be able to do anything, anything really, to turn this around now because they've just got too far ahead for Clovers. The way that the fight could go good for Alliance is if the BKBs are baited out and wasted. So the Bloodseeker, we. And the, uh, who else is BKB? Bambo, yeah. They have three BKBs, so if they can bait out BKB and potentially just kite it inside of their base and force force the L into a situation where they overextend, that's pretty much the only way they're going to win a fight. The downside is that Swift Ending has Aegis, so even if he dies once, he can just BKB after he respawns. So it's, it's pretty tough. Here we go, the mid lane, ready to try and break the high ground. All Clover, just waiting for the creep wave to move in. But Alliance, they're ready and waiting. They're ready to take this fight for long. Loader now with 2,600 on top of the battle. Wow, it's going to be an early BKB here from We Are. They're ready to kick off the fight straight onto Minus with the Sonic Wave as well. Haven't been able to quite kill him. And now with the Omni Slash, it's pretty nice, but it's not nice enough. They've already lost two. Bambo, he's got to get himself out of here. Lotus trying to find a kill in return. Looking to Blade Fury someone out, but Swift Endings there. He finds the bash onto Loader. Zags are going in as well. Double kill for Swift Ending. Can they kill the Bloodseeker? They certainly would love to. They'll be able to bring him down once, but he's got the Aegis. And they've still got three alive here. Can they find anything more? We are coming straight in with the Orchid now with a charge from Bambo. The Yule's there to buy some time for S4, but the Blood Bride's been laid down. S4 incredibly low. We'll find the Light Strike onto a Swift Ending, and that's going to be enough to save him. Buyback from Loader. Swift Ending being glimmer caped up here by Saxa. And the Bulldog, oh, he finds the vacuum onto Saxa, but Saxa still with the Arctic Burn gets himself up to the high ground. Loader's going to try and chase this one down, and he might just find it here with the phase boots, the drums, and the Yasha. He's pretty damn fast. Should be able to find a kill of some sort. Surge forwards will find the Winter Wyvern. And well, they do manage to hold their base there, and, and they do find three kills in return. 4CL did not know the meaning of the word stop during that engagement. <laughs> we just blinks to the high ground, BKBs, and just tries to go ham. Now, they did force a buyback out of the joke. I think you already mentioned that. But uh, the Lena actually bought back too, so yeah. everything considered, it was a pretty expensive defense here from Alliance. But, oh, smoke middle lane. Are they going to catch anyone? Oh, up on to Lotus Sonic Wave as well. There's a Blood Right. Minus moving forward with the Snowball. Lotus trying to get himself with the Blood Right, but with the Blood Right, Yisha and the Rupture on him. He'll go down. Weeha with the Sonic Wave. Ake with the Stolen Sonic Wave. Actually enabling them to turn this one round. And Ake with a fantastic ult steal. Meaning that they find EGM and Swift Ending. Two massive kills here for Alliance. Can I, I just mean, mention? Yeah. Like, during the last team fight too, is Bambo actually going on this? Okay, he's not. I, 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 can, I can actually talk. It's a little bit right. too Bambo for him. Yeah. yeah, but the in the fight middle lane where they were defending the base, Ake still curse and killed EGM with the curse. And then he steals Sonic Wave and single-handedly turns the fight for his team. I gotta say, like, out of everyone in this game, I think far and away Ake is playing the best Dota. And if they manage to stay in the game and ultimately win, it's pretty much going to be because of his last couple of plays. Like this is the, he's done some great stuff. Yeah. This is the integral part of the game where if you lose one bad team fight, it's just over for you because 4CL have so much farm that your base cannot live long enough to respawn, more or less. So if you die and you don't have buyback, that's just it. 
I mean, after that load, he's a little bit poorer. We did see him sing on about 2,400 now. Just sing on the 1,100 on top of his Battle Fury, but if they can find the space for him to get that far, they've still got a chance. Saxa just getting down a nice, aggressive observer ward here on the top lane. Bottom lane, we are moving forward. He's got the got the ultimate picked up. Do you imagine he's just going to look straight for the scythe this game? Yeah, I think that's a, definitely a fair play because Juggernaut is one of those heroes where. Eventually, he might pick up Manta, then your Orchid is not really as useful as it was before. And I wouldn't even be shocked to see Loda pick that up as his next choice for that sole reason. Uh, but the Hex just allows you that guaranteed, I'm going to disable you, allows my team to actually catch up, whereas Orchid is only just a silence. They can just keep walking away. So there's a ton of utility behind it. Well, mid lane. Four Clovers, just for the moment. Just holding it a little bit more defensively. Let's see what they do now. There we go. That's what we like to see. They picked up a smoke. Getting themselves in position here as the courier flies out, and they'll almost certainly look to try and go, look to fight Alliance head on. Right, here we go, leading the way, Bambo, looking for a charge opportunity. Pings are coming out on top and mid. Why well, are they gonna? It's like they're gonna decide on the top lane. Charge onto S4. Bulldog and Loader are there. Loader does have that Omni Slash available. Oh, getting nice and close and burst on. Here we go. Can they do anything in reaction? But no, the Winter's Curse straight onto Lode. Did manage to get out of that Blade Fury. BKB's being popped on out with the ult. Lode just disintegrates. Now dead for 70 seconds. No buyback here on this Juggernaut. And that was the pick off the Four Clover. Well, they'll be very, very happy with that one, taking down the Jug. At first, it seemed like there might have been some turn potential from Alliance because they used Curse when the Juggernaut was spinning. But unfortunately, Four Seal's farm advantage is still insane like they have over 15,000 uh, net worth and experience lead at this point so maybe okay isn't good enough for alliance they, they really need the perfect team fight yeah, bomb lane bamba just looking to push in as well and looking towards roshan roshan not quite up yet just thanks to reborn we are we ourselves aren't too sure when it's going to reappear but i imagine it'll be sometime soon it feels like quite a while ago they got roshan last yeah, I think it's probably another two or three minutes. That would be my guess. I didn't actually take note of the Roshan timer as it died. So I, I don't even do that when I play. I'm actually awful. Should really do that. <laughs> oh. Okay, a couple minutes time. 33 to 18. Net worth not looking any better ready for Alliance. They did manage to have that little bit of a pullback as they brought it round, but it was just about a 3,000 or so swing. It's pretty much returned to the lead that Poor Clover had already accumulated, and, and same story really in terms of XP. Yeah, Still, um, I mean, uh, what's the plan here for Alliance? Do they just kind of have to wait for the fight to come to them now? Is it just is too risky for them to leave the base themselves, really, and look for an aggressive place? The problem that they're having right now is their form of initiation is hard countered by BKB. So there's two ways that you can start a fight as Alliance. The first is Yules into Light Strike Array. The second is pretty much just throwing out a snowball and hoping for the best. The problem with both of those abilities is that they can be BKB'd off. And as soon as that happens, most of these players have pretty good reflexes, so you would imagine that at the very least a snowball would be BKB'd, if not a Yule's combo, right? When that happens, your whole form of initiation and solo killing a hero is already out the window. Like at that point, you're already behind. It's like, okay, well, we can't kill this guy, they're BKB'd, they can turn on us, and then we can't do much. So. It's really difficult to do something aggressive like that unless you're sure you're going to find a target that can't deal with it, like maybe the Shaker or maybe the Winter Wyvern. Like those are the ideal targets that you would find in a smoke. But then you have the other problem of, okay, well their cores are really farmed. Like that Bloodseeker is massive and Bambo's even starting to get a little bit up there in net worth. And of course you have Wii, who is also gigantic. So yeah, it's, it's tough. When you're in these situations, it's usually best to let the enemy team come to you. Try to breach high ground. Get a good back wall, maybe after the BKBs are down, and hope for the best. Well, they're moving out quite aggressively in the mid lane. Both Loader and Ake just here by the Ancients. On that high ground, it's going to be the Radiant Jungle that's on the menu here for Weeha as he just cleans this up here on the Quap. Way up to 2,800 on top of his ultimate orb, so closing in on that money for that Hex if he wishes to do so. And Bambo hanging in the pit here. I really want to try and find this Roche. They know it's going to be up any second, any minute. It's going to be Alliance. They are going to smoke up. The question is, what are they going to do with this? Where are they going to head? Maybe towards the Roche Pit themselves? Or oh, looks are they going to waste time in the Dire Jungle? They haven't really got the best of vision out across the map. So they're going to have to hazard a, hazard a guess at where to find the side of Four Clovers. And, well, they're going to get it right. They're heading towards the pit. But they're waiting. Ready and waiting for them here. If Loader reveals himself, which he will. We are actually going to blink back here. 
out of the fight. Bambo with the Glimmer K, with the BKB. Won't be able to quite find the ultimate here. That's for with the yours. Will be able to get himself out as well. Now it's just going to be Loader trying to retreat, but the charge is there from Bambo. Rupture as well. Ake's got to do something amazing today. He's supposed to be a Winter's Cursed up. The wall will get dropped very nicely here by Bulldog. Sonic Wave flies through as well, though. They've taken down Loader. Now, can they find anything in return? Snowball forward. They'll find the Winter Wyvern, but now it's going to be the Abyssal. They'll find the Lena. They'll find S4. Looking for Ake as well. He does Cold Embrace himself, up, but he's only prolonging the inevitable. He'll fall as well. Three heroes to die on the side of Alliance. And they might even find my nuts as well. We are chasing him out. Through the jungle. He's got the blink and he's going to go for it. Moving in on some minus. He'll pop out the sigil. Turns around for a quick punch, but at this point just doesn't do enough to Weeha. Charge has come through as well from Bambo, and that's going to be a beyond godlike streak here for Weeha. 37 for 19 and a 4 for 1 trade. Once again, favoring the side of four clovers. I, I don't know. <laughs> After a fight like that, what do you really do if you're Alliance? Like, they just don't have enough farm. Like that, that's simply the biggest problem. Even though during the fights, Ake almost got himself out. He was about a second away from stealing Curse again, but unfortunately he was actually the target of the Curse. So he blinked the high ground and got Curse like at the same time. So instead of being able to get it, he ends up taking Cold Embrace. And maybe a good Curse could have turned that around for them, but unfortunately that's not the case. So here come 4CL down middle lane. They're going to be able to get this middle set of racks with relative ease. There is no Glyph right now from Alliance and no buyback actually either. So I believe all of them should be able to just retreat and maybe they even hang around. Although they are missing their Shaker right now and uh, the Wyvern. Yeah, and Roche is back up now, so they may very well play it safe and, and look to try and get the Aegis under their belt before they go back into the base of Alliance. EGM scouted that one out. And EGM himself, in fact, well, he's closing in on the money here for a Lotus Orb. Just needs to finish off that Perseverance. Got about 900 gold to go before he's got that. That's going to be very nice. And uh, talking about Lotus Orbs, there's already one on Bambo. He's got his Lotus Orb complete. And yeah, it's going to be Roche falling. Alliance are making their way over. They do have everything available. The lag kind of coming out here, but hopefully that's just for us. And Loader moving forward. They want to try and do something. The Roche is low, but sacked already with the Winter's Curse here. Bambo's put the Lotus Orb down onto himself. It's going to be hard for Alliance to do anything against him. Snowball forward onto Saxa with a punch as well, but they haven't got the damage. There's going to be a Laguna Blade as Bambo, but it's not enough. Charging across S4 towards Ake. Wee's already found the kill onto Loader. Bambo getting blocked out by the Ice Shards. Can they bring him down here? They will find the kill onto Bambo. So, so far, one for one trade. Not too bad here for the side of Alliance. And it looks like it's going right, to be the side back. of Four Clovers back in. Up. He stole he stole Aegis oh. and Cheese, by the way. Just so you know. I didn't want to interrupt, but that was pretty freaking amazing. He actually just Okay, alright, alright. So in every single Dota game, they should have just lost right there. The Aegis gets taken by somebody on the side of 4CL and they get wiped and the game's over. However, Bulldog goes in, gets the Aegis Snatch, takes the cheese, eats it, manages to keep himself alive, and forces the rest of four clovers back. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to win in the game, but damn, that is pretty much a definition of clutch. Wow. I mean, you, you've got to give them credit here. Alliance are holding on. They've only lost their middle set of racks 45 minutes in, so it's not the end of the world. They do have a jug. Of course, with Battle Fury, is they going to be able to deal with those creeps anyway? But still, they've got quite a way to go to come back into this one fully. Well, the nice thing about having that Battle Fury Jug is the longer the game goes, it does kind of favor you in the sense that you're always going to be able to farm efficiently when you can find the time. The biggest issue that Alliance have been running into is they can't find the time. It, they just don't have any space. Well, looks like even though they didn't get the Roche, they didn't get the Aegis, they didn't get the Cheese, they're going to go for a push here on this bottom lane. Four Clover's still feeling. They're in the driver's seat at the moment. And Alliance, well, S4 just pushing out the mid, 2,200 on him, on top of the Yule Zag, so we'll see what he decides to go for. And Swift ending coming down to John on the bottom, did finish off that Lincoln Sphere. So going to make it a lot harder for heroes like the Lena to catch him out. But I mean, well, is it, I mean, do you feel this is the start of Alliance turning it? I mean, in terms of net worth, it hasn't really done anything off the back of that. It's kind of leveled out, but it's still it's leveling more... out at a huge advantage for Four Clovers. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, it's like I mentioned before, it's not necessarily that that play is going to turn the game in a huge way for Alliance. It's just more like, it was really damn good by Bulldog to be able to make that happen. And if, for whatever reason, 4CL don't manage to go high ground again and get a second set of racks, it's going to be because of that play. So it's one of those things where you look back and, look oh, at this. here we go. They're going straight for it, charging to Loader. The Fisher comes out straight away, and Loader will get four staffed out. But now, the Winter's Curse on to S4. He dis 
tell about the Echo Slam, everything. Two heroes dropping. The Aegis is there for Bulldog. Can they do anything to turn this, though? The charge is there. Swift ending moving forward. The bash. He will get forced over the Fisher here. Very nicely. Wall's been dropped it. Swift ending. Oh, light strike coming through. Snowball onto three. Moorish punch as well. But now his miners caught amidst the entirety of four clovers. Will get himself up to the higher ground, but he's going to fall. And now we're at a position where there are three heroes dead on the side of Alliance. Neither of them with buyback. It's only this Dark Seer and Alina left in the fray. They'll find a nice light strike. S4 trying to do his best, but he's silenced up. He will have the yours to buy himself sometime. Bambo going straight for the charge onto Bulldog. The Sonic Wave finishes off S4, and GG is called Four Clovers take game one. Uh, it's a little bit heartbreaking, actually, for, uh, for Alliance. I mean, I don't want to take any credit away from Forceal. They definitely deserve to win this particular game, but it just kind of stinks that we had to remake from a 5 0 advantage for Alliance in the first place. But I want to give a shout out to Bambo. He played excellent this game, even though he died a lot. He, he had some amazing charges, like the one inside of the jungle, I just want to keep going back to you because I feel like that was the point in the game where 4CL were doing pretty good, and then as soon as that team fight happened, keep in mind